What's going on guys? We are back for another replay analysis, this time of a sentient toaster. I think we've done one of these earlier, meh, maybe about half a year ago at this point, uh, for a replay analysis. But he got this done, patreon.com slash gib00. People always ask, how do I get my replay analyzed? You go there, you sign up for the tier, and uh, you can get your replay analyzed. It's sold out most of the time, but spots open up here or there, so keep on the lookout. Then there's free play tier, coaching tier, some exclusive videos. Soon, some tournaments. It's the first time I'm saying that, so, uh, yeah, so look out for that. Uh, but we're gonna get right into this replay. He is gold level. He is playing with people this time. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Good face off here. Like, so I don't mind. Like, on most face offs, it doesn't really matter. Like, if you want to cheat, sure. Like, the best thing is, though, is in threes, I would say a cheat is probably a little bit more acceptable uh but i like, guess as long as you have someone in net then you're probably okay like around the gold level you can't trust face-offs too much in this so it is kind of okay to be a little bit more passive because face-offs can get a little bit more wild around the gold level where it's more inconsistent so i don't mind that at all uh this is a good job like with the rotations here you see how drunk driver is going back to his side of the field so right as that happens like ascending toaster starting to move up waiting for this rebound all three of orange are in the same net I like that pop, and I like that idea of going up for that shot. Not a, a, a easy shot whatsoever. It just flies a little bit too high, and that'll happen. His teammate also went up. Uh, I believe it was Drunk Driver. Going up just with the whiff as well. Now, these are always so hard to hit because once you see someone else up and they make the miss, it is so hard to read it uh, afterwards because you normally think they're going to hit it, so you kind of let off a little bit. At least that's what happens with me all the time. So, you can see why a miss would happen there. But it was a good play, though, and a very good scoring chance. And that's what you want to see around this level. It's not always going to work out, but as long as you keep up those scoring chances, eventually some of these will fall in. Great clear here for a, a nice little corner pass. It uh, doesn't help too much that it got glued to the wall a bit. So, actually, a pretty decent save by he got them angles. But a good idea, just keeping that pressure on. Nice high clears or what you want to see thrown in, uh, into the other end. See here, he doesn't turn on ball cam fast enough. So when you're going back for boost, like, uh, if you can, when you think it could be a questionable play, like right here, kind of questionable. You see how the orange team is, like he uh, toggles ball cam really quickly there. To see the orange team is coming up on his side of the field. So it's a little bit tough. But then maybe you try and line up with the boost as quickly as you can and turn off ball cam to try and make a play. One thing he could have done is he could have went up the wall here. See how he cuts in? Now he has less time to make a play on the ball because he's closer to the ball. Instead, if he would have went up on the wall, maybe he can make that save. It's a lot harder of a play, obviously. Uh, but eventually, when you start learning defense more and more, it's a really good idea to start using that wall as... Um, an effective way to guard the goal line, but not have to use a ton of boost or not have to waste as much time. And here, he kind of just creeps up a little bit too far, just too much of a sharp turn uh, inside, and they can't react uh, quick enough to that play. But uh, it was a pretty good shot, to be fair, so not much he can do there. All right. Good face-off win. Third down in the corner. Let's get some boost. I like the rotations. They're pretty clean. Uh, riding up the post is not so clean, but it's okay. Um, they're very wide and they're very noticeable. What an own goal. Um, see how here, like, they're playing smooth here. Like, Drunk Driver probably should be up a little bit uh, further since he should know his teammate is coming behind him. But still, like, I don't mind this, like, safe rotation play. It's not a bad idea, like, around the uh, gold level. People make a lot of mistakes around gold. So you kind of want to be a little bit safer, and sometimes the mistakes will just get you a goal, like so right there. But I don't mind this at the goal level. When you start getting higher and higher up, then you want to do a little bit tighter rotations where the third man should be like already moving up and attacking a ball while you're heading back instead of waiting until you're behind him to make the play. And that's what I kind of mean by tighter rotations. It's kind of just like, like the circle is moving a little bit faster for everyone. So everyone has to cheat up a little bit here or there. Um, but, like, at this level, it's not a bad idea to be pretty low or pretty slow on him. All right, here we see a play, like, uh, Tom or Hadam is kind of coming back. So he, uh, over-rotates a bit here 
a little bit confusing between these two. Um, I don't think he has boost, so he should have probably got out of there. I don't think he even grabbed that mid-boost, but he does try and attack it. This kind of screws up the play, but Ascending and Toaster makes up for it, or at least he does try and circle back as quickly as he notices uh, Hatam is up there, so not a bad play. Oh, this is an okay hit. Like I like the idea of hitting it towards your teammate. He kind of is not really trying for the ball, though, so it doesn't really work out. But I do like the idea of looking for a teammate when you're trying to clear the ball. Because if they can get another tip, it's a lot easier to clear it that way than, like, if you don't have a chance at one of those big booming clears. Here again, like, sending it. He's being usually that third man back. He's being very passive, letting his teammates do the work, and then coming up when he needs to. Uh, his teammates keep over-rotating, though. They're a little bit too aggressive, and they keep trying to to take a shot away from a sentient toaster or take away a play like we've seen this like three or four times now so his teammates have to be a little bit more careful for that but that's why i like how a sentient toaster is playing where he's being passive because he knows his teammates have these tendencies so as long as you know how to play with your team then it's okay but hopefully they can be a little bit less aggressive here or there this should be a goal nicely done there so right here we see the bad play by cirrus you never want to hit this high uh, up the wall. See right there? As soon as he touches that ball, that's a bad ball. What you want to do is hit this curve, this brick curve. Uh, like more on the downside, I would say. So the ball pops up in the air, and you have plenty of time to get back. And the defense can also get back. But it just rolls out perfectly for center for the blue team. And ascending it, he finishes it off. Uh, and also, the orange team, a little bit ball chasey. Like Protractor, he's the last one back. Probably shouldn't be ball chasing this. He ball chases a little too hard, just leaves the net wide open. Sending it, gets the finish. Well done there. Nice goal. Alright, got another face off here. See what happens. Not much. Alright, now time to move for the boost. I don't mind him sitting back here. It's not the end of the world, because there's about to be a 50-50. Those can go a little weird, so I don't mind being, again, a little bit safe. Around the gold level is... Not the end of the world, but eventually the aggression has to pick up a little bit from Ascending a Toaster as you move up the ranks. And, like, the rotations, again, have to be a little bit tighter, which just means more more and more aggression. Nice play there. Nice clear from the top. And a good center. A little bit of a bad read. That's okay. Like, I like the idea. He creeps up, so he's in a passing lane. He's in a really good spot to uh, receive a pass. It just hits that curve just barely. Uh, off that corner and that really throws sending it off so bound to happen now again safe rotations here one thing he could have done let's go back a little bit I just want to see this play from the start just see if he grabs the boost or not uh, I believe he does I yeah okay so he grabs this boost uh, once you grab a boost that is when you're allowed to do an over rotation like you're allowed to cut in and spin around quickly and continue with a play. Uh, normally, like I don't like to see it when people have extremely low boost because it kind of screws up the whole game plan. One, they don't have as much of a scoring chance. Two, they um, they get out of position really quickly because they can't make it back in time. So there he had full boost. He probably could have over-rotated Drunk Driver and made a better play there and continued that uh, offensive push. But instead, he circles behind Drunk Driver but whenever you pick up a 100 boost canister, you know, it, like it depends on teammates, obviously, and it like depends how they're playing. But that uh, like is an avenue where you can do an over rotation and cut in and and kind of uh, screw up the whole one, two, three. Basically, go one, two, one again uh, if you grab that boost and let the th uh, third man wait it out as you bother everyone or try for the play. Because it might spill out to a better chance for the third player. Uh, so it's not a bad idea to try for that when you grab those peanuts. Nice shot there. Nice save. And into wide open space. Now, those are the saves that you want to see. That ball was in the air. And Hatam, or Hatam, I'm not sure what to call him, made a really good save here. So this save right here, it's kind of in the air. But he still gets, like, underneath the ball, throws it to a completely wide open area, and gets the clear. It's not always just saving the ball. It's where you place it uh, afterwards. The safe play is to just lightly touch it back into your corners. But if you have a clear attempt, go for it. Um, if you have wide open space, go for that. And he does both there. Really, really good clear there. And a lot of people forget that. Like, 
Like, goalie's not just about saves. It's about putting the ball into certain locations so the other team doesn't have another scoring chance or puts you on a counterattack and uh, you throw it into the other end. Nice play here from Sydney Toaster. Like, so it is a center, but it's not the end of the world because instead, because he got them angles, probably would have had a decent shot. Drunk Driver might have been able to make a play. Uh, but it is a dangerous ball, but he kind of got forced into that situation. He m made the most of it, and Drunk Driver was sitting on the line anyway and making the play, so worked out for him, but it was dangerous, but that happens sometimes. Sometimes you have to make dangerous plays. Now it's a three on zero. Drunk Driver putting it home. Uh, good idea here by Sandy Toaster. Like, these plays uh, go unnoticed a lot, but, like, I like how he goes extremely wide, just in case... He throws it wide somehow. He's protecting that outside shot, and then he could put it in in case Drunk Driver misses. So that's a good play. The time with the faceoff win. Probably should have left that for uh, sending a Toaster. Toaster probably should have circled back and grabbed that middle boost. Let the guy with boost and more momentum make the play right after a faceoff, if possible. Uh, but, I, but sometimes it's hard to tell what's happening on those plays. So instead, they have to circle back. Again, Drunk Driver, he's been extremely passive. He's playing on that goal line a lot lately. It seemed like, like early on in the game, he really wasn't. But lately, he's been just sitting on the goal line. And I want to show you why this is a bad idea right here. Right here, he's just sitting there. He should be getting ready for this play right here. But he, he's still a little bit passive. Eh. Like, it wasn't a bad idea of where he was. Because, like, that like guy's about to take a shot. But one thing I see a lot of people do is they just want to throw the ball forward. He doesn't necessarily have to throw this ball forward. He could easily throw this high and right up the wall on his left. But instead, he th tries to throw it forward, gets the dunk on him, and uh, they get the goal because of it. And that's just greed. Like, you don't have to clear it all the way out. Hit it low and to the side, and you'll waste so much time. But he didn't. He went for the greed play. And I'm back on toaster, right? Okay. So 10 seconds left. Now, this is about clock management. You should be pretty passive here. Oh, no, the dunk. Wow. Wow. So, they are being pretty passive. They have two back, and now Hatama's coming back. But honestly, on plays like that, you just have to flip into those. You have to get the higher uh, angle uh, on the 50-50 to protect yourself. He tries to be a little bit too cute and goes for the chip shot. But honestly... With 10 seconds left, all you have to do is waste time. You just don't want that ball to go in. The only way that ball goes in is if you stay in the ground. Like, if you get elevated at all, that is not a shot. And uh, just went for the more risky play uh, to end this game. And looks like we're going into overtime. Another overtime replay analysis. People getting their money's worth. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got. Got the face off. Good win there. Since no one's back on orange team, it's actually really good. They all have to circle back of the net. Drunk driver should be moving up. See, like how a sending toaster comes all the way back to net. You don't necessarily have to go this far back on a rotation. He should just be like probably a little bit um, in front of that boost pad that's in front of him. Let drunk driver move up. And then he's still in a safe area where he can guard for certain types of shots. And then he like he could always circle back later. Uh, but again, it's gold. It's not the end of the world to play on the goal line because a lot of people are not going to be that good. And you can just wait for mistakes to just fall right into you. But I would like a little bit more aggression uh, if he wants to increase and move up in the ranks into the platinum area. Air drunk driver trying for the pass. Nothing really happening. I, like, I like the turnaround by sending it. He's uh, looking for a juicy rebound and didn't get it. And then both his teammates are there, though. So this is like that uh, ultimate uh, setup, kind of. Um, let me go over here to this view. I always lose stuff. Okay, here we go. So, you kind of want to do, like, it's like a, like a greater than sign. When someone has it in the corner, you want the other guy, like, in the middle. Like, sending it probably should be a little bit more close to the middle area. And then you want your other guy to be behind him. Hatam should be... Kind of where sending it is, almost. But maybe just, like, a little bit over towards, like, this boost pad. So it's a kind of like a greater than sign. Um, so th uh, the way it works is a drunk driver, he tries for the pass to the middle. Th that's where sending it should be. And if the pass fails, usually the team's just going to clear it back into the same corner. Then Hatam can come up and try for another center. And this is where uh, um, a sending it could probably stay and have drunk driver circle all the way back and get boost. And they would have two tries on the same exact play. Uh, they were a little bit different here. Like, Sandy didn't get too close. Again, being a little cautious. 
But uh, 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 Hatam does follow it up there. And then Seni, uh, he gets that second chance at that center, and they make them pay. And that's like pretty much cookie cutter when someone has the ball in the corner. That's how you kind of want to play it. But well done there for the win. Got a little scary there for a bit, but Seni it pulls it out, and the toaster bread's done or something. The toaster got burnt. The other team bread. Got burnt. Anyway, that's the end of this replay analysis. Thank you so much, Sending a Toaster, for the support on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Gibbs00, zero zero, guys. Zero, oh, 000, if you haven't checked it out. It's in the description all the time. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.